In today's video, I'm gonna go over some very interesting new Blender add-ons, but also very important updates to popular ones. I mean add-ons that you probably already have, and now they came with additional tools and features. So let's dive in and find out what's new. We're gonna start with stylized water shaders and generator. Well, this add-on makes creating cartoon-style water scenes much easier. First of all, it combines shader-based water materials with geometry node setups to generate things like animated water surfaces, foam, underwater terrains, and even floating lotus leaves. And as you might have expected, this is fully procedural, without any simulations needed. And by the way, you will get a bunch of ready-made water presets, which you can mix and match. So you can drop in stylized waves, ripples, and foam that actually looks great in EV and cycles. So it is basically plug and play for stylized water. Just add the water asset to your scene and tweak a few parameters to get a beautifully animated water and underwater environments without any hassle. Next, we're going to talk about Matplus. Matplus is an add-on that came out not too long ago, and now it got an update. It turns Blender into a layer-based painting toolkit, like Substance Painter inside Blender, and the new 1.1 update packs some exciting improvements. So now, you can create smart materials that bundle up complex layer effects for easy reuse, and you can slap on decals as layers to add detail without any fuss. And the update also introduced new layer effects, like additional generators and filters, such as HSV, curves, bevel, and scratch generators, to fine-tune the textures all directly on the layers, which is great. Overall, the workflow got smoother too. For example, you can work with textures, generators, and filters directly on layers, without manual masks, and you can use handy shortcuts for duplicating or reordering layers. It is a big quality of life boost for Blender artists doing painting and texturing. I mean, it will let you manage complex material layers and effects entirely in Blender, which is taking us closely to the Substance Painter experience in Blender. The next add-on is called Quad Filler, which also got an interesting update. This is a great modeling add-on by KC Sheep, that just hit stable release. So it helps you patch holes in your mesh with clean and quad topology in one click pretty much. The idea is simple. You select to open edge loops and activate quad filler and it automatically bridges the gap with a grid of quads, saving you from manually bridging edges and fixing triangles. The new 1.0 update just out of the box expanded the tool to handle mismatch edge counts, which is super cool. So you can now fill gaps even if one side has, say, five edges and the other has three, and it will intelligently produce mostly quads in the fill. In cases where perfect quads aren't possible, it keeps any triangles or angles minimal and easy to clean up. Generally speaking, it is a lightweight add-on, but a huge time saver for modeling, especially for hard surface modeling, in addition to cleanup tasks, where you need to quickly fill holes with decent topology. OCD or one-click damage is a useful add-on for when your model looks too pristine and you want to rough it up in just seconds. It lets you add realistic damage and wire to an object with literally one click. You pick a material type like concrete, wood, bricks, etc. and it applies a procedural damage effect like chips, cracks, broken edges, and all the other good stuff, automatically that is. In the 2.0 update, OCD introduced a hero module which basically acts as an extra pass for the fine details and consolidates the damage. So after the one-click based damage, the hero tools let you fuse pieces and add filter details to really sell the look of complex destruction. I think it is great because you can get a base level of damage instantly, then dial up the detail in specific spots, like deeper cracks or shattered corners using the hero module. The result is that you can take something that looks new and make it much older and damaged, and with this update, you've got an additional layer of control to make it look exactly as you want it to be. In recent days, we also got Track Tools version 2. For those into making race tracks or road environments, Track Tools is a set of smart geometry node modifiers, which can help you lay out roads, tracks, and surrounding details way faster and easier than doing it by hand. In the new version 2 beta, the toolkit got even better. It now supports things like automatic road intersections, procedural terrain shaping, and a modular approach to building your scene. Essentially, you control a curve for your road, 
and the add-on will generate the road mesh with UVs, bacon, etc. Carve it into a terrain, add guardrails or track edges, place trees or lights along the sides, and so on. And you can do that through stackable GeoNode setups. The update focuses on making the system more powerful, in addition to being more flexible. For example, you can have a base terrain and shrink wrap your road onto the real world elevation data or create your own terrain from scratch. There is also now support for tunnels and smoother integration of multiple segments. As you can see, it is still in beta, but it is a huge time saver for anyone building driving levels or architectural road layouts. Random Materials, on the other hand, is a simple but super handy add-on. Random Materials, as the name suggests, let you assign random materials or colors to many objects or faces at once. So, as you might have expected, instead of manually changing colors on a bunch of objects, you can select a group of objects or even all faces of an object and have the add-on generate materials with random hues for each. By the way, you have control over the randomness too, for example, you can limit it to a certain hue range, adjust saturation and value ranges to keep the colors in a certain style, or even supply a custom palette of materials which you can pick from. It also lets you set material properties like metallic, roughness, alpha, etc. And you can do that uniformly if needed. So it is great for quickly giving variation of things like a forest, crowd of characters, or just testing different look dev options. So it can save you a ton of time on tedious material assignment work. This new add-on called Ultimate Toon Shader Generator is all about achieving that stylized cartoon and anime look. First of all, it provides a toolset to generate high-quality cell shader materials without you fiddling with complex node setups. You also get 10 built-in Toon Shader presets out of the box, so you can apply a preset and get an anime-style shading on your model immediately, which is great. And there is even a randomized button to instantly shuffle the look for variety, and of course, you're not stuck with the presets, I mean, it gives you full control over the light, and even shadow thresholds, color ramps, and supports both image textures and flat colors, for flexibility that is. One neat feature is an index system, that lets you manage multiple two materials in one scene, independently, so we can have different objects with different tune looks, without them interfering, which is important. And by the way, it is designed for EV rendering, which means you can work in real time. On the other hand, Light Painter is a creative lighting tool that pretty much lets you paint light and shadow onto your model, as if you are painting with a brush. It sounds wild, but here is how it works. It uses a special shader and cycles ray tracing, so that when you go into vertex paint mode and paint onto an object, those painted areas act like emission sources in your scene, so you can directly brush bright spots or rim lights onto a model, or darken areas and see the lighting updates interactively. So there's no need to add a bunch of lamps and fuss with their positions. Instead, you just draw where you want the light to be, and the tool is user-friendly with simple controls. You can adjust the color and intensity of the painted light, and you can do that easily. Also, you can randomize color temperatures for variety and control specular intensity, in addition to other things just from one panel. On the other hand, Easy Smart Blend is a material workflow booster that helps you blend two different materials together using procedural masks in a super simple way. I mean, if you ever tried to create a complex material, like a rusty metal where paint is peeling off or moss growing on stone, you know it can be a pain to mix shaders with masks, and this add-on makes it, well, easy. It comes with a library of 140 procedural materials and a set of smart masks like ambient occlusion, edges, scratches, etc. And you just choose two materials from the library, choose a mask type, and the add-on will automatically blend those materials on your object using the mask. There are sliders to tweak the mask like scale, contrast, etc. So you can fine-tune the blend. It also preserves the material PBR properties. In other words, it is like having a mini substance style material blending system inside Blender. Now back with lighting, RayPilot is a new lighting workflow toolkit. You see, this isn't just one tool, it is actually an entire suite that streamlines how you manage lights in your scene. For starters, it has an intuitive light exclusion system, which is a panel where you can visually drag and drop objects to include or exclude them from specific lights. 
even separating direct light and shadows for fine control. This makes Blender's light linking much easier to handle. It also comes with a variety of 140 gobo textures, which you can project through your lights with one click, for instant atmosphere. The UI is interesting too. There is a floating toolbar that you can move around in the viewport for quick adjustments, which auto hides when you don't need it, so it doesn't clutter your view. Plus, there is a solo mode, which lets you isolate one light's contribution at a time, and an interactive place mode where you can drag lights around and tweak their properties with high ease in real time. Now, I'm gonna talk about Smart Mesh Blend. This is a cool geometry node asset that has multiple objects bent together as if they were one continuous mesh. Originally, it allowed you to blend the normals of adjusted meshes by proximity. So when you could bash a bunch of parts together, be it for character, environment, or a hard surface model, you can remove the obvious shaded seams where they meet. You basically drag in an asset, point it to a collection of objects, and it merges their shading smoothly without actually boolean or joining them. And the new update in version 2, which was just released, takes it a step further by also blending materials across those boundaries. This means if two pieces have different materials, it can create a gradual transition so the material changes isn't harsh at the joint. Under the hood, it uses a fake SDF approach to achieve this, but as a user, you mostly just see the separate meshes start looking like one unified piece. It also has options for a bit of mesh replacement, especially at the intersections, if you want a more organic merge. It is incredibly useful for prototyping and concepting, as you can imagine. Lastly, we're going to talk about Build-A-Form. Build-A-Form is a Blender add-on for generating bas-relief sculptures. You know, those embossed carvings you would see on coins or plaques, and now you can do that from images too. The new version to update is big, because it introduced a Generate with Image feature, allowing you to create a bas-relief from a 2D image directly. You see, previously the add-on worked by taking a 3D model, which is great for turning, say, a 3D sculpture into a relief, for 3D printing or CNC carving. But now you can also start with just a photo, or maybe an artwork that the animal will compute a relief height map out of, which you can then tweak or sculpt in Blender. What's nice is that the add-on uses a frequency separation technique, splitting the relief into three layers, height, depth, and curvature, which you can adjust independently. This gives you fun control to sharpen or soften details and get a clean result. This is all Blender native and geared for real production use, so you can output high quality height maps, an actual geometry for 3D printing, or even convert the relief into an alpha brush, which you can use later for sculpting. So guys, if you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.